in this video I want to use this unit circle to find uh, all this the mesh exact values of these angles of sine cos and tan uh, from 0 to 360 basically at an interval of 15 degrees so just using this unit circle and a bit of uh, trigonometry and a geometry so three things so uh, this is a unit circle of radius 1 of course and uh, imagine a particle is moving anticlockwise so this is 0 degrees when you say 0 degrees it is on the x-axis on the positive arm of the x-axis at a distance of 1 so the coordinate is 1 comma 0 when it is 90 the coordinate is 0 1 and so on so you know this so by just looking at this unit circle I can say uh, sine so let's talk about cos okay so cos so let me talk about again let's go back to unit circle so I can say cos theta cos of an angle is x Okay, so that's, that's one thing that you need to get from unit circle cos theta is x that means when the particle has moved theta degrees the x coordinate is going to be sorry the yeah the x coordinate is going to be cos theta and by just looking at uh, using Soka Toa I can say sine theta and these are definitions sine is opposite over hypotenuse so the opposite for this triangle uh, so this is triangle OMP. In triangle OMP, M is a right angle. Okay, and so we can say uh, sine theta is equal to one. So this is something that you can say from uh, the unit circle. So by just looking at this, we can fill in. So sine zero, you're looking at the y coordinate. That means you're looking at this point. So what's the y coordinate? It is zero. So let's only fill the sign. When it is 90 degree, what's the y coordinate? It is 1. Okay, for cos, you're looking at the x coordinate. So cos 0, the, the x coordinate is 1, and the y coordinate is at 90, it is 0. Okay, so let's move on. So what happens when it's 180? When it is 180, Hopefully you can see it. So at 180, so let me write it here. You can fill the gaps yourself. So so let's say cos 180. Cos 180 is negative 1. Cos 270. You can fill the gaps yourself. Cos 270 is equal to 0. And cos 360 is, is back to 0. And that's why a cos graph now let's relate it to the cos graph. So the cos graph is, let me draw a cos graph by just looking at the unit circle. So this is, um, insert shapes, and this is a unit circle. I didn't want to do this, but let's do it. Okay, so again, so yeah, so this is cos, cos 0 is 1, okay, so it starts at the maximum, cos 0 is 1, then cos 90, cos 90 is 0, okay, so cos 90 is 0, 180, 271, 1, yeah, so I made a mistake here, cos 360 is 1, not 0 cos 360 is 1. Okay, so that's how the cos starts at the maximum and hits back at maximum. So sine, so sine is, uh, this is your maximum, this is your minimum, so this is negative 1. Okay, so sine starts at 0, so sine 90 sine 90 is you're looking at the y coordinate so sine 90 is 1 we already written that sine 180 sine 180 is how much you're again looking at the y coordinate so sine 180 is 0 sine 270 is you're coming back to 
sine 270 is you're looking at the y coordinate is negative 1 and sine 360 is 0 they're coming back to 0 so a sine graph starts at the baseline okay so baseline so this is starting at baseline hits the maximum 0 negative 1 uh, I'm not drawing it good so 0 negative 1 okay and comes back to 0 okay so yeah uh, comes back to 0 yeah so this is a one full cycle so let me so this is 270 okay so this is 0 this is 90 this is 180 270 360 I hope you can see and this is 360 so this is negative 1 so let me use red for a sign and comes back to 0 so the graph would start at baseline which is 0 so this is a basic sine and cosine graph okay so I'll pause this video and try to do the rest yourself. Okay. Okay, in this part I want to prove the basic trig identity of sine squared plus cos squared using the unit circle. So using the unit circle, I can say using Pythagoras, so I can say in triangle, in triangle OMP looking at this right angle triangle inside the unit circle can I say using Pythagoras x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 now what is x we just saw x is this is same as saying this is cos theta plus cos theta comma sine theta cos theta comma sine theta okay so instead of saying x squared I can say this is cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. This is your basic, this is basic Pythago uh, Pythagorean theorem. So this is also called a Pythagorean trig identity. This has come from Pythagoras theorem. Okay, again I'll pause. I want to use this space prove sine 30 is half so if you can prove using geometry you can use a bit of geometry to prove sine 30 is half hopefully you should have done why sine 30 is half okay so if you use a calculator you know sine 30 is going to be half so let's prove this using a simple 30 60 sine 30 is half not sine theta sine 30 is half so basically what we are saying is in a right angle triangle this result tells me uh, in a 30 degree triangle if the opposite is 1 the hypotenuse is going to be 2. So let me draw the same uh, triangle OMP outside like this. So I want to draw a geometry. I do a, ge a bit of geometry here. So this is OMP the same right angle triangle here and say this is 1 so this is going to be so I said this is 30 so if this is 30 and if I drop this down so let me take the reflection of P so you can understand by using a bit of geometry there's no reflection so if you say P dash is a reflection of P okay so it's just reflecting on this uh, line or the x-axis so using symmetry and a bit of geometry if this is 30 you can understand this is 60 and if this is 60 this is going to be 60 okay now if this is right angle this is also right angle and, th and if this is 60 this is going to be 30 so what have we got now we have got a right a equilateral triangle of 60 60 60 and as it's an equiangular triangle it's an equilateral triangle so all the angles this is 60 this is 60 and this is also 60 so as it's an equiangular triangle it has to be equilateral so this is 1 
if op is 1 o dash op dash is also going to be 1 and if op dash is 1 this is also 1 this pp dash is also going to be 1 and we know that because p is a reflection of p pm is equal to p dash m and if this is 1 this is going to be half so this is half so we have proved so now we can use Sokato and say well sine 30 is opposite over hypotenuse which is half divided by 1 and half divided by 1 is half okay so I wanted to prove cos 60 is root 3 over 2 yourself using sine squared plus cos squared is 1 okay or you can also prove it from this triangle but let's prove it in a different way hopefully you have proved cos 30 is going to be root 3 over 2 in a different way we have proved using this triangle or OMP that root 3 over 2 but let's use the Pythagorean trig identity which is cos squared plus sine squared is 1 so let me write that again so we just proved cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. Okay. So using putting putting this value, I can say this is cos squared theta. And cos squared 30 is going to be square of half, which is a quarter. Take away is equal to 1. Now taking away quarter from both sides, cos squared 30. I should say 30 yeah not theta this is cos squared 30 cos squared 30 so cos squared 30 taking away quarter from both sides is going to be 3 over 4 and taking square root of both sides I can say cos theta cos 30 is equal to root 3 over 2 okay so now you can also so let's fill, fill these gaps so cos sine 30 is one half sine 30 is let me write sine 30 is one half one uh, this is I can't write here for some reasons okay so this is one half okay yeah sine 30 is one half and cos 30 is root 3 over 2 root 3 over 2 okay it doesn't understand okay and using so now we have already proved or if you take a 30 60 triangle okay so so we have just proved now so let's use the same triangle this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees okay so this cos sine 30 is half so this is one this is two this is what sine 30 is no so if this is one this is going to be half so if this is one this is going to be half and we have proved if this is cos 30 it is root 3 over 2 okay in a different way so using again <coughs> this <coughs> excuse me using this triangle we can say what is sine 60 so sine 60 is opposite over hypotenuse so that is going to be root 3 over 2 okay and uh, uh, what else cos 60 is half 1 over 2 okay so now I want you to again I'm going to pause this video and try to prove cos 15 or cos 75 so let's prove cos 75 using compound angle formula now to prove sine 75 or cos 75 we need 45 uh, if you're using compound angle formula so again let's find sine and cos of sine 45 and cos 45 using this triangle so let me draw this triangle again hopefully you know this but I'm repeating it so if you can prove it you can do it yourself so this is one this is OPM 
So if this is one, uh, I hope you can prove it yourself. These two sides are going to be equal. So using again Pythagoras, you can say this is going to be root two over root two, and this is also going to be root two. Okay, so this is 45. So this is also 45. So this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So I can say sine 45, sine 45 is root 2 over 1. So multiplying the root 2 to both the numerator and denominator, the root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2 over root 2. Root 2, uh, so, okay, opposite over, am I doing something wrong? 1 over root 2, oh, sorry, I made a mistake here. <laughs> Always good to stop and think. Sine is, okay, so I think I'm doing a mistake here, so let me figure it out. <coughs> so this is 1. Let me prove it. If this is x, this is also x. Okay. I know the answer is 1 over root 2. So let's again prove it. So x squared plus x squared is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. Okay. So 2x squared is 1. 2x squared is 1. So x is 1 over root 2. Yeah, that's the mistake. 1 over root 2. So I know this is 1 over root 2, this is 1 over root 2, so this is also 1 over root 2. So I can say sine 45 is equal to cos 45 is equal to 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2 divided by 1 is 1 over root 2 and multiplying by root 2 to both the numerator and denominator, I can say sine 45 is equal to cos 45 is equal to root 2 over 2. So I want to use this sine 45 and cos sine 45 or cos 45 to find and also sine 30 and cos 30 to find sine 75 using compound angle formula. So can you do that yourself? So let's find sine 75 using compound angle formula. So sine 75, sine 75 is equal to sine 60, sorry, 30 plus 45, or 45 plus 30. So using the compound angle formula, I can say <coughs> this is equal to sine 30, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sine 30 cos 45 plus cos 30 cos 30 sine 45. This is just applying the compound angle formula. So let's use sine 30. Sine 30 is half times root 2 over 2 plus cos 30 is root 3 over 2 times root 2 over 2. So simplifying this, this is uh, root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4, which is simplified root 6 over 4. So this can be simplified to root 6 plus root 2 over 4. Now, same way you can prove you can prove that yourself cos 45, cos 75 using compound angle formula or also cos squared plus sine squared. You can prove that way. But I think this is, you can prove this yourself. This will be cos root 6 take away root 2 divided by 4. Okay, and if you look at 30 and 60, they are complementary. So from this I can say cos 75 is equal to sine 15. You can check that yourself because 15 and 75 are complementary. And this is the same as cos 15. Okay, so you can find, if you know 75, you can write 15. 
Okay, so once you know this, I'm not, I can't write it because it's in a column. If you get this, you from sine and cos, you can write 10, you can write all these angles. Okay, and once you get all these angles at an interval of 15, you can figure out all these angles just using symmetry and this fact that your x coordinate is going to be cos theta and y coordinate is going to be sine theta. So that's your job to finish these, all these values using these in the first quadrant. So this is called the principal angle. So using these principal angle and using unit circle, I want you to do the rest yourself.